Ava, are you ready? Yeah, you are? Okay, let's begin, Ava. Yes? Are you going to join us to pray? Okay, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Very good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Oh, good girl. Look at that. Okay, so today <clears throat> it's Friday, February 26, 2021. We're going to comment on the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 20 to 26. Okay, we'll only read a, a part of this <clears throat> and comment uh, on it. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Pay attention. Unless you surpass the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Let's just stop there. The rest of the gospel talks about uh, specific situations that our Lord gives us examples of, <clears throat> you know, what he might mean by surpassing the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, let me begin by asking a question. Who is heaven for? Who is heaven for? How's that, Shavi? Louder, please. For everyone, yeah. God wants all of us to go to heaven, right? But who qualifies to get to heaven? Who would qualify to get to heaven? Do we know? Joe? People who... Live the virtues to a heroic degree. Perfect answer. What do you call those people, Joe? Saints. Right? Saints. Only the saints are qualified to enter heaven. Those who have lived the virtues to a heroic degree. Of course, when Christ died on the cross, he opened the gates of heaven for all of us. Right? He welcomed all of us back into his kingdom in heaven. But we got work to do, right? It was not a done deal once and for all. We got to work to do. We got to work on our own qualifications to really merit heaven, right? Only saints go to heaven. Only saints go to heaven. So the goody-goody, those who are mediocre with their spiritual life, those who just try to get by every day, trying to do the minimum, uh, you know, <laughs> they don't go to heaven right away. Well, if they're lucky, they end up in purgatory where they need to have some purification process for their souls before they really, really uh, get to be qualified to go to heaven. At least you make it to purgatory and... Uh, Okay, you're lucky you got there. And that's already an assurance that later on you go to heaven. But who wants that? Who wants to be spending time in purgatory, right? And besides, if your only aim is to make it to purgatory, the chances of you not being able to make it there is great, right? Because the way 
that, <laughs> that we are under attack from all sides these days, from the devil himself to the, 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 the environment you're in and the society you circulate in. The chances of you even landing in purgatory, if you don't struggle hard enough, might even be very dismal. So we shouldn't settle for the minimum. Heaven is, is not for the, the cowards. It's not for the, the complacent ones. It's for the ones who are heroic. Okay? Heaven is not for the mediocres. It's for the achievers. Heaven is not for the losers. It's for the champions. Okay? Heaven is not for the sideliners. It's for the frontliners. Heaven is not for the lackeys. It's for the leaders. Heaven is not for the lukewarm. It is for the saints. Unless you surpass the goody goody righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Look, the Pharisees were the leaders of the Jews. They were supposed to be the exemplars of goodness and virtue. They were the exemplars of following the commandments of God. Yet, what, are, what does our Lord say of them? Oh, that's not enough. <clears throat> it's not enough that you just follow the commandments. It's not enough that you just do the minimum. You got to surpass the righteousness of these goody goody people. You got to be exemplars of virtue if you are to merit the kingdom of heaven. So it's not okay just to say, oh, I'm a good person. You know, I don't hurt anybody. I don't commit mortal sin. I'm a good person. I go to Mass, I pray. <laughs> yeah, same with the Pharisees. They're, they're righteous, why not? Yeah, they're righteous, all right. But what does our Lord say? That's not enough. Not enough. You got to surpass it. Because those things are just the minimum requirements. The minimum. And you know what? If all you do is the minimum, the tendency of our own broken human nature is that we slacken. We slacken. And when you slacken, then the tendency is you fall behind the minimum. You fall behind the minimum. And if you are not lucky, and at the point of death you get caught at that point where you are behind the minimum, you are not at par with the minimum, then you don't even get to purgatory. See? That's how that works. So we cannot aim for the minimum. We have to aim for sanctity. We have to aim for heroic virtue. Because just in case we fall back behind on our standards on that big aim, then maybe more or less we will make it to purgatory. Right? So it's very, very wrong to, to harbor the mentality of living under minimum standards. Very bad. Very bad. It is not enough to just comply with the commandments. No. Do not just do the minimum to avoid sin. You need to live the virtues heroically. Do not only be satisfied with praying sometimes. You need to really go deep in your relationships with God. It is not enough to just do some good acts towards your neighbor. What did our Lord say about dealing with our neighbor? Well, you got to love your neighbor as yourself. That's not easy. You got to lay down your life for your friends. That's not easy. See? It's not just keeping nice relationships with people, being nice to people. No, <laughs> lay down your life for your friends. Right? That's not easy. It's not a question of giving alms. You know, in excess of your abundance. God bless you, Ava. It's not enough to just give, give to the poor. Give alms out of your excesses, out of your abundance. No. Generosity means giving till it hurts. <laughs> giving of what you own. Giving of yourself. 
giving of your time until it hurts. That is generosity. That's the measure of virtue. Not giving because you have some surplus. From the beginning in Genesis, what do we read? God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. What is the image of God? What is God? God is perfect. God is holiness personified. God is eternal perfection. God is eternal sanctity. And we were made in that image. So we are supposed to mirror the perfections of God. Right? We're supposed to mirror the perfections of God. So therefore, there's no room for mediocrity. In the way we live our lives, if we are mediocres, we are not living up to that image that we are made uh, from. Right? And then Jesus continues to tell us in the Gospels, if you love those who love you, what reward do you get? Right? He says in St. Matthew, even the tax collectors do that. They know how to love. If you only greet your brothers, well, what are you doing more than others? You know, everybody knows how to be nice. Well, even the Gentiles do that. What does our Lord instead say? Be perfect as my heavenly Father is perfect. That's a tall order. Be perfect. Okay? Of course, no one can really be perfect. But at least Jesus is putting the bar. Okay? Setting the bar there. The bar is perfection. Okay? Because let's not forget that while we are corrupted beings, because of our own sinfulness, we nevertheless are perfectible. In other words, we can improve, we can improve, we can improve, we can improve, okay? Better and better each day. That is why we set the goal as that of being perfection, even if we know it's unattainable as it is, but we can approximate it. We can approximate perfection by making it a goal of our lives, okay? And then little by little, we try to Hit it. We try to hit it. We try to hit it. Okay? By improving ourselves in virtue little by little every day. Every day. Every day of our lives until the time comes when we are ready to hang up the gloves. Throw in the towel. Not out of defeat, but because God is call calling us now. And say, okay, come, you faithful good and faith, good and faithful servant okay now you can enter the kingdom that god has prepared for you for all eternity so this lent is a good opportunity for us to really um think about a virtue okay i'm going to recommend this let's let's think about one very particular specific virtue that we can try to grow in more this time of Lent. And we will offer our sacrifices, our fasting, our abstinence, and our mortifications for that intention. To grow in that virtue. It can be any, any virtue. Let's say, you know, what they can go. It can be any, anything from the human virtue of punctuality, for example. Or order. Or even cheerfulness. Okay? Or even uh, piety. Or the way, you know, how we prayed, our devotions and things like that. Or even just putting a more attention into our rosary or whatever it is you might want to pick, right? Pick one virtue, just one virtue and try to struggle to grow in living up to that virtue more and more and more and more every day during this season of Lent. And you would have made a fantastic use of this season and would have grown more in grace and fervor before God.
Okay, let's try that. One virtue this Lent. We're just beginning. We're just in the first week. Okay, you got plenty more time to work on that virtue that you can grow in during this season of Lent. Okay, that is it for us this morning, folks. Shall we say goodbye? Is Ava going to say goodbye? Oh, bye. You want to come here and say goodbye here, Ava? Come, come, come. Oh, you don't want? Bye. Okay, she's busy with her toys over here. Okay, well, goodbye, everybody. Have a good weekend. And I hope uh, you enjoy your weekend. We'll see you again on... See you again. We'll see you again on Monday. Monday. On Monday. Yes. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.